everybody today we're going to be reading the story of Ferdinand and this is a story that is set in Spain so we're gonna read this today first we're gonna look for Spain on our map Spain is a country in Europe so we're gonna go ahead and first we'll look at our big world map and we will locate Spain on the big world or Europe on the big world map so here is Europe again we live in North America so we're over here. North America is our continent. The United States of America is our country. Maryland is our state and Baltimore is our city. So we are going to be reading the story of Ferdinand. Again, it takes place in Europe and more specifically in Spain. So in our informational text that we read the other day about Europe, we saw it on a map. And then they had this close-up map for us and we can see this country right here. That is the country of Spain. So why are we reading this story that is taking place in Spain? We're reading it because when you read a story that is set in a different country, it can help readers, that's us, imagine what it might be like to live there or to visit there. So we're going to read this storybook the story of Ferdinand. So this is not an informational text, but we will, um, but it is set in Spain and we might learn more about Spain from it. All right, so on the front cover, we have our author, Mundro Leaf. So remember the author's job is to write the words in the story. And we have the illustrator, Robert Lawson, drawings by Robert Lawson. So the illustrator in this book drew the pictures. So just by looking at that front cover, you can say it real quick or you can pause the video and tell me what do you think this story is going to be about? All right, let's see if you're right. So here's our title page, the story of Ferdinand. I have lots of sticky notes in here so that I can remember to ask all the right questions. So don't mind those. Once upon a time in Spain. Ooh, so we see, they talked about how there are some castles in Europe um, the other day, and so we could already see some. There was a little bull and his name was Ferdinand. So remember, a bull is the name of a male, a boy cow. All the other little bulls he lived with would run and jump and butt their heads together. But not Ferdinand. He liked to just sit quietly and smell the flowers. He had a favorite spot out in the pasture under a cork tree. It was his favorite tree and he would sit in its shade all day and smell the flowers. So there was a word on that page that we might not be familiar with. That's the word pasture. So if we don't know what that word means, we can read the sentence again. He had a favorite spot out in the pasture under a cork tree. So we see him, we can check the illustration to help us figure out what that word means. We see him sitting underneath this tree. He's surrounded by flowers and grass. So maybe pasture means a big space of land with flowers and grass. So here he is sitting in his pasture. Sometimes his mother, who is a cow, that's a female cow, would worry about him. She was afraid he would be lonesome all by himself. So if you're feeling lonesome, then you might be feeling lonely or alone. Why don't you run and play with the other little bulls and skip and butt your head, she would say. So when bulls butt their head, that means that they're hitting each other or hitting something with their horns. That's another new term. But Ferdinand would shake his head. I like it better here where I can just sit quietly and smell the flowers. His mother saw that he was not lonesome. And because she was an understanding mother, even though she was a cow, she let him just sit there and be happy. So here's mama walking away. It says mother on her bell. And there he is off sitting underneath the tree and he's perfectly happy. Some people wanna have lots of other people around. Some people prefer to be alone. So same with this cow. He just prefers to be by himself. 
As the years went by, Ferdinand grew and grew until he was very big and strong. So here he is. He's gotten much bigger now. All the other bulls who had grown up with him in the same pasture would fight each other all day. They would butt each other and stick each other with their horns. What they wanted most of all was to be picked to fight at the bullfights in Madrid. So I'm going to put a link to a video about the bullfights in Madrid, but that is something that takes place every year where a bunch of bulls run together. So they all wanted to be picked for this, but not Ferdinand. He just liked, he still liked to just sit quietly under the cork tree and smell the flowers. One day, five men came in very funny hats to pick the biggest, fastest, roughest bull to fight in the bullfights in Madrid. Madrid is a city in Spain. All the other bulls ran around snorting and butting, leaping and jumping so the men would think that they were very, very strong and fierce and pick them. So snorting is a sound that you make when you breathe really fast through your nose. So pigs snort a lot. Um, and so sometimes bulls will snort too, especially if they're fighting each other. So it's like a sound. Fierce. If you're fierce, that means you're really powerful and strong. So they needed to pick a really strong, powerful, fierce um, bull to fight. Ferdinand knew that they wouldn't pick him and he didn't care. So he went out to his favorite cork tree to sit down. So if we look at this illustration, how can we tell which one is Ferdinand? We can tell because he's the one that's off walking towards the cork tree, looking at the flowers and the butterfly and not worrying about what these men think because he really doesn't want to be picked at all. He didn't look where he was sitting. And instead of sitting on the nice cool grass in the shade, he sat on a bumblebee. Well, if you were a bumblebee and um, a bull sat on you, what would you do? You would sting him. And that is just what this bee did to Ferdinand. So on this page, in this illustration, we see the bee. And in this illustration, we see Ferdinand's face. So the illustrator did not draw the bee stinging Ferdinand, but we can tell by this face that he definitely was stung. Look at how shocked and surprised he is. How would you feel if you sat on a bee by accident? Ooh, that would hurt so bad. Wow, did it hurt. Ferdinand jumped up with a snort. He ran around puffing and snorting, butting and pawing the ground as if you were crazy. If you're pawing the ground, you're kind of scratching at it. You might have seen your cat or your dog do that before. The five men saw, joy, saw him and they all shouted with joy. Here was the largest and fiercest bull of all. Just the one for the bullfights in Madrid. So they thought, oh wow, Ferdinand is so tough and he's so fierce. But remember, why had Ferdinand been being so fierce? So they took him away for the bullfight day in a cart. What a day it was. Flags were flying, bands were playing, and all the lovely ladies had flowers in their hair. So you can see they all have flags that say Ferdinand. They're all ready to cheer him on. They had a parade into the bull ring. First came the banderillos with long, sharp pins with ribbons on them to stick in the bull and make him mad. So that's how they would get the bulls to fight is they would poke them with something so that the bulls would run around. Next came the picadoros who rode skinny horses and they had long spears to stick in the bull and make him madder. Hmm. Then came the matador, the proudest of all. He thought he was very handsome and bowed to the ladies. He had a red cape and a sword and was supposed to stick the bull last of all. Then came the bull. And you know who that was, don't you? Ferdinand. 
so you can see his little head poking around the corner. So I wonder what will happen. They called him Ferdinand the Fierce and all the Banderillos were afraid of him and the Picadores were afraid of him and the Matador was scared stiff. Ferdinand ran to the middle of the ring and everyone shouted and clapped because they thought he was going to fight fiercely and butt and snort and stick his horns around. So look at this illustration. How can this illustration help us figure out just how big that ring is? We know that Ferdinand is this huge, huge bull, but look at how teeny tiny he looks on this page. And the illustrator decided not to even draw the full ring because he knew that there wouldn't even be room. So what do you think Ferdinand is going to do? Not Ferdinand. When he got to the middle of the ring, he saw the flowers in all the lovely lady's hair, and he just sat down quietly and smelled. He wouldn't fight and be fierce no matter what they did. He just sat and smelled. And the banderillos were mad, and the picadores were mad, and the matador was so mad he cried because he couldn't show off with his cape and sword. Have you ever been so mad you've cried? So they had to take Ferdinand home. So here they are living, leaving the big ring. And for all I know, he is still sitting there under his favorite cork tree, smelling the flowers just quietly. He is very happy. So that was the story of Ferdinand. So who is the main character in the story? The main character is who the story is about. In this case, our main character is Ferdinand. What did you notice about Ferdinand? How is he different from the other bulls? That's going to be your writing question for today. How is Ferdinand different from the other bulls in this story? So you can comment, you can write it on a piece of paper. That would be excellent. You can um, draw a picture and send it to me or whoever your teacher is. Um, keep those questions, those wonder questions coming for Europe and Asia because tomorrow we will be back with our big chart with all those questions about Europe and Asia. I've gotten some terrific responses so far. So shout out to everyone that has um, sent me a response for what they noticed and wondered about Europe and Asia. Keep those questions coming. If you want to add one about the story of Ferdinand, you can do that as well. Thank you for listening.